When you think of Romania, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Well, if your mind is as supernaturally soaked as mine, you probably said Transylvania, Count Dracula, and vampires. Count Dracula might be the most famous thing to come out of the area, but he's not necessarily the scariest. What I'm talking about is the Hoyabachu Forest. This is definitely a weird and scary place. There have been reports of everything from UFO sightings to ghost sightings and even a portal to other dimensions. It's known as the Bermuda Triangle of Romania and the most haunted forest in the entire world. The locals there warn that you walk into the forest, expect anything. They themselves fight the urge to run when they come even close to the forest. The forest seems to be able to read people too. It's believed that if you enter with malicious thoughts, then the forest will show that person for who they really are and then punish them. For a long time, it was thought of as bad luck to even mention the forest. The forest is about 1.8 square miles in diameter and is located near Cluj-Napoca, the second largest city in Romania and the capital of Transylvania. Part of the northeastern area of the forest is bordered by Valle Lunga, which is where the remnants of the oldest Neolithic settlement in Romania was discovered in 1960. It's believed that that thing was established around 6500 BC and tombs and houses have been uncovered from it. The forest was named after a shepherd that disappeared with his flock of 200 sheep. The people that live around the area are too frightened to go into the forest because the stories and legends have been passed down through generations. Many believe that anyone who enters take the risk of never returning, and the forest is becoming more popular even than Brand Castle, the actual castle of Count Vlad Tepes, who is the real Count Dracula. The Hoyabachu Forest is allegedly haunted by Romanian peasants that were murdered there and are unable to move on, and they're the ones that are trapped and causing all the paranormal activity because they're so furious that they can't move on. At least seven people have committed suicide by hanging themselves in the forest. One of the first documented cases of paranormal phenomenon in the Hoyabachu Forest was in the late 1960s, and a biologist named Andrew Sift caught several photos of a disc-shaped UFO flying across the sky. He took a bunch of photos of all the phenomenon he witnessed. One of them that he witnessed was a bright UFO that was almost touching the ground, and he took a picture of it. To this day, it's described as one of the clearest photos of a UFO ever taken in Romania, and, without a doubt, one of the best images of its kind in the entire world. Unfortunately, after Alexandru Sif's death, most of his pictures mysteriously vanished. There were a few pictures that weren't lost, and they were published in a 1995 book called Phenomenally de la Pedriri Hoyabachu. I'm sure I just destroyed the way that that was pronounced, but that is by a man named Adrian Petrut. Petrut himself was on an episode, actually two episodes, of Destination Truth, which is where I first learned of the Hoyabachu Forest. He's a professor of chemistry and the president of the Romanian Society of Parapsychology, and he's known for his extensive research into the forest since the 1970s. It's his belief that if you spend too much time in the forest, you are likely to experience the anxiety and physical ailments that most people describe. Ailments like vomiting, excessive thirst, and even nausea. He described the forest as one of the best places of unexplained phenomenon due to the intensity, variety, and complexity of the manifestations. The forest is also a place where practicing Wiccans go because they believe it's a place of natural power and increase the potency of their spells. In 1968, Emile Barnier also caught a UFO on film, and the photo was said to be one of the few authentic pictures that could be verified by assessment. A fun fact about the forest? Because of its popularity and legends, Nicolas Cage actually visited it to see if he could experience anything. Although. I don't know if he did or not. So, to move on to the phenomenon that people see in the Hoyabachu Forest, it's known for its extreme amount of paranormal activity. Like I said, that includes ghost sightings, faces appearing in pictures that weren't present at the time of the picture being taken, UFO sightings, and apparitions. Once a group of hikers ran into a huge wolf 
that stared at them blankly before calmly walking away. If you know anything about Skinwalker Ranch, that's what I thought of when I heard about the wolf. Faces are said to flash in front of people in the forest, and disfigured faces appear out of nowhere in the trees, almost like they're blooming out of the tree itself. Disembodied female voices, giggling and laughing, can also be heard. The trees here bend over, almost like they're bowing down. They're twisted and you can sometimes see screaming faces spotted in the bark. The undergrowth there is thick and spooky. The trees are dense. Some of the trees even look like they've been charred. Some don't have a single spot of green on them. There's even areas where as many as eight trees can grow out of the same root. They cast weird shadows that seem to follow you, and they can also make noises like chattering teeth. There's beliefs there that the trees can bend and twist to block your path. Other beliefs state that you can be abducted by aliens or even fall into another dimension. One of the most common experiences people have are witnessing unidentified orbs of light. These orbs have been witnessed by hundreds, maybe even thousands of people, including the locals around Cluj-Napoca. They're usually seen from inside the tree line, and weirder still is the fact that these orbs are seen with a thermal detector, but they produce no heat signature on their own. They seem to dance around and even flicker in and out of existence without any warning at all. They did catch these lights on those episodes of Destination Truth, which I will talk about later. When pictures are developed, they don't come out in the order they're taken. Compasses go crazy as soon as you enter the forest. And if you bring electronic devices into the forest, chances are it's going to malfunction and the batteries will drain. Now the draining of the batteries, as many of you know, can definitely indicate paranormal activity. Pairs of green eyes can also be seen always watching you and some have witnessed a thick black fog and screaming voices accompany the eyes. The weirdest part of the entire forest is the dead zone, known as the circle. It's a nearly perfect circle in the middle of the forest where no vegetation grows at all. And this is believed to be the epicenter of the paranormal activity. Samples of the soil have been taken to try to find out why the soil can not support life. But every single sample has stumped the scientists because there's little to no difference at all between the soil samples taken inside the circle and the soil samples taken throughout the rest of the forest. Many locals believe that this is the home of a ghost. There's pictures of the circle that show outlines with human shapes and other shapes that are hovering off of the ground. There's another area like this that I want to point out that's a little closer to home. It's called the Devil's Stomping Ground and it's in North Carolina. People also have physical feelings while they're in the forest. While they're in the forest they can feel intense feelings of anxiety like they're constantly being watched especially when they're around the forest edge. Some people get nauseous, others vomit. Some get rashes, migraines, burns, scratches. Some even have the urge to flee, although no danger is present at the time at all. There's reports of people passing out in the forest and waking up in different locations with no idea how much time has passed or the memory of the missing time, or even how they got to the location that they were found in. If you're in the forest, you may even have flashes of memories that you forgot or forgotten. These memories seem to fade though the further you get out of the forest. Researchers and investigators alike have experienced the feelings of being pushed and tripped and they've even had their bags that they were carrying ripped from them. Astral projection is also something that people have experienced. People have claimed that they have witnessed themselves floating above themselves while their bodies lay on the forest floor. People have also been known to disappear for extended periods of time, finally turning up with no memory of the missing time, while others have turned up dead. One legend talks about a five-year-old girl that went into the forest and got lost. She was found five years later wearing the same clothes that she went missing in, and they looked brand new, and not like they were five years old. The girl had no memory of the last five years. Another woman claimed that she went for a walk in the forest, and time stopped for a few minutes. She said she felt herself disappear only to reappear a few minutes later with a 15th century coin in her pocket. Did this woman actually time travel? Now for the truly terrifying part. 
on both of these episodes of Destination Truth that I keep talking about, they experienced tons of things. I urge you to go on YouTube and watch them both. You don't have to watch the entire episode, just watch the investigations of Hoyabachi. If you don't know what Destination Truth is, it's a paranormal research show where Josh Gates and his team go to different locations to see if they can find or debunk legends all around the world. Sometimes they go look for a Sasquatch, other times they go look for living dinosaurs, sometimes they do ghost hunting. In this case, at the Hoyabachi Forest, they're trying to look for a little bit of everything. During his first tour of the Hoyabachu Forest, which he describes as the scariest place in Destination Truth history, and the only place that they've ever visited twice, they start doing isolated EVP sessions in the middle of the circle. When his cameraman Evan takes his turn, he starts hearing female voices from the tree line behind him. And as he continues to do his session, it looks like something pulls him up and throws him backwards in less than a frame. I mean, he's literally there one second and gone the next second. The team rushes to find him, and when they find him, he's clearly disoriented and in shock. He told the group it felt like something blew right through him, and then he discovered fresh claw-like scratches on his arm. Now, they did this in the middle of a cold season, so they're wearing jackets and long sleeve shirts, and he even has his jacket that snaps around his thumb. The jacket and the shirt were untouched, but underneath it, there were fresh claw marks. Later that night, Rex, the medic, started vomiting and feeling sick, so they decided to call it quits before any of the other team members came down with anything. They also caught a few of the weird lights off in the distance, and once they got back from the investigation, they had Jason Hawes and Grant Wilson, who, as many of you know, are the founders of the Atlantic Paranormal Society, which is the team that investigates ghosts on ghost hunters. They reviewed the footage and determined that something paranormal was definitely going on there. Because of all this activity, Josh decided to go back a second time, two years later. Before their investigation even began, they started seeing the mysterious lights again. They started hearing the voice of a little girl, and one of the investigators actually witnessed a shadow figure coming towards Evan. They started doing their EVP sessions again, and when it comes to Evan's turn, he starts hearing a ringing in his ears. He gets up, disoriented, and starts stumbling around, and when Josh and the other investigators get to him, they notice blood coming from inside his ear. Once they got back home, they watch the footage again, and actually catch a child's laughter at the same time the shadow was coming for Evan. Needless to say, Evan and Josh decided that they shouldn't go back to Hoyabachu and do another investigation. Some locals and researchers alike believe that the forest is a gateway to another dimension, maybe even like Skinwalker Ranch. This could explain why so many different, unexplainable things are witnessed here. Could this also be why the people are going missing? Are they transported to a different dimension or another place in the world? Or like the woman with the coin, maybe they're even transported to a different time. Another theory is that there's an alien base in the forest, and that's responsible for all the disturbances. But the most crazy theory, in my opinion, is that the forest is actually the true location of the lost city of Atlantis, and the people from the city can teleport anywhere in the world. Less paranormal theories of the forest actually say that the forest emits some sort of sound wave that we can't hear, but can be responsible for the hallucinations and the physical effects. Studies have shown that the sound waves can cause nosebleeds, physical pain, headaches, feelings of uneasiness, and nauseousness. But this theory doesn't really hold up for me when you throw in the circle, the apparitions and the spirits, or the actual physical attacks that people suffer, like Evan. This forest might never be explained, but it's definitely a place that I'm interested in going to, and is actually at the top of my list to go to. Maybe one day I will go and do a research investigation of my own, and you'll hear all of my crazy encounters on the next episode that I do after that. In my opinion, this place is definitely a paranormal hotspot, maybe even a hellmouth or a devil's gate, and all investigations should not be taken lightly. Because if you go into those woods tonight, you're definitely in for a big surprise.
All right, guys, tell me what you thought of that one. The Hoyabachi Forest is definitely a crazy spot. And like I said a couple of minutes ago, it's definitely a spot that I would like to check out. If I had one opportunity to check out a place of paranormal activity, it would be the Hoyabachi Forest. Of course, I would probably need to bring somebody that spoke fluent Romanian so I would know what's going on. And, you know, like 25 Bibles so I can keep myself protected. But every time I hear about the Hoyabachi Forest, I just get fascinated all over again. Seriously, go check out the episodes of Destination Truth that do the Hoyabachu Forest. The first episode where Evan gets attacked is about at the 16 minute mark. I watched it the other night so I could jot it down and let you guys know. So if you don't want to watch the whole episode, you can at least go and see where Evan gets attacked. It's seriously crazy. I've never seen anything like that. Like always, I want to thank everybody that tunes in and listens to this. I know this one's a little different than what we normally do, because instead of an encounter, it's a paranormal report. And I want to start doing more of these, because it's really fun researching, and I want to shed light on these places and these creatures and these phenomena that maybe some of you aren't very versed in. Because I like to learn everything I can about new paranormal creatures and places that I haven't heard because it's also fascinating to me. So if there's something that you want me to do a paranormal report on, send it to me. I'll put it on my list. I'll look it up. Each one actually has a little file folder that I do. I kind of feel like Mulder when I'm doing it. It's kind of cool. But next episode is going to be another report from an encounter, and it's actually one of my really close friends. So it's kind of cool listening to all of her stories, and I definitely don't want to go to the apartment that she used to live in, because I don't want to run into Casper. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. You can also go to our Facebook group, The Supernaturalist Group. You can also email me your stories, the Supernaturalist channel at gmail.com. I would love to hear all of your stories and put them on an episode. They come out every Tuesday now. And we have a lot more of those episodes coming up. There's one that I personally think it's a Wendigo. Or if you watch Supernatural, you'll pronounce it Wendigo. There's another one from a haunted house in Georgia. And then there's another Dogman story coming out. I get a lot of Dogman stories, so I don't want to do them all in a row. I know everybody loves Dogman, but I do want to do other things in between. So just bear with me on the episodes that aren't as interesting as the Dogman. Because everybody deserves their chance to share their story, whether it's a Dogman or a Ghost or a Wendigo or, you know, everything in between. So if you have stories like that, doesn't matter what kind of encounter, email me. The Supernaturalist channel at gmail.com. If you want to remain anonymous, I will honor that and I will either pick a name myself or if you want to put a name out there, I can put that out there for you too. Like I said in the last one, I want to know about you guys. Tell me where you're from. Tell me your favorite paranormal creature. If you have artwork or you want to send in your rendition of the Don't Miss Your Chance to Scream, send it to me. Again, the Supernaturalist channel at gmail.com. We also have a Google Plus account. We also have a Twitter. I'm going to leave for now. You'll hear from me again next week with a haunted apartment story from my good friend Taryn. And remember... Don't miss your chance to scream.